Hey everybody, it's Graham over at GrahamCocker.com. Hope you're having a great day. Today we're going to talk about acoustic guitar. Specifically, how do you record this thing and get a good tone without a lot of fuss, without a lot of time. Uh, if you've been paying any attention to my blog, then hopefully you already have uh, a Pro Tools system. If not Pro Tools, it's fine. You can use any other DAW. I always recommend Pro Tools. But you've got a uh, software recording system with a basic audio interface one or two channels is fine, doesn't really matter. And hopefully you've got a large diaphragm studio condenser microphone for a hundred bucks or less. You don't need to spend any more than a hundred bucks to get a good sound out of a mic. If you did, it's okay. You're gonna get a great tone anyway. In fact, this one happens to be a couple hundred bucks. I got a few different mics. I just had this one out, so I'm gonna use it right now. Um, this is a Rode NT1A, great mic also. But hopefully you got the mic and you've got your audio interface and you've got an acoustic guitar. If so, you're good to go. It's all you need to get a great tone. You don't need an external preamp. You don't need a treated room. You don't need hardwood floors. You don't need any of this crazy stuff. You just need some creativity and a good ear and a couple of things I'm going to show you today will hopefully help. So, some people record it direct. If they have an acoustic electric, this is an acoustic electric. I've got the, uh, the pickup inside. I could just plug right in, but you're going to get a really thin sound. You don't want to use that at all. That's really just for live settings. Uh, when you want to record a guitar for a recording, a nice studio polish recording, you want to capture every element of the acoustic. I'm talking the body in the guitar, the warmth, um, the brightness in the strings, um, the plucking, everything. You want it all to come together. You don't get that from inside the guitar because that's not how you listen to the guitar. Your ear isn't inside this wood, you hear how it resonates in the real world. So that's what you want to capture. You want a mic and all you need is a large diaphragm studio condenser microphone like I recommended a few of them on my post. Um, anyone will do and what you're going to do is throw it up in front of the acoustic and there's a couple places I'm going to show you that you want to stay away from and how you think about where you place it because where you place it on the guitar is going to make a big difference. All right, We're going to jump right into this real quick. For example, most people just throw it up in front of the sound hole. It's hard to see from the video perhaps, but I've got this six to eight inches away from my guitar and it's right in front of the sound hole. So the face of the mic is just looking right at the hole. All right, so what I'm gonna do is play a little something for you. You can hear what that sounds like so we can discuss really briefly, all right? So it's boomy, it's full, it's, it's right there in front of the sound hole. Um, that is what's coming out of the sound hole, but remember, that's not exactly what your ear hears either. Your ear isn't right up in front of this thing. You're hearing it the way it resonates all around. So then some people say, well, it's too muddy, it's too low. I want to pick up more of the, the brightness in the string. So we'll just put it in front of the neck, let's say. So around this is right in front of the 12th fret. Again, about six inches away. We'll do the exact same thing. Okay, a little different. So you're going to hear more of the brightness. You're going to hear a little bit less of that body, um, the fullness in the guitar. Uh, again, it might work, but what I like to do is a combination. I like to blend, all right? And again, a microphone is not as intelligent as your ear. I've, I mentioned this in a post before, but your ear isn't just doing the same thing a microphone is doing. You have a brain attached to that ear, so when you hear something like an acoustic guitar, you can pick out the low and the brightness, and you can blend it together in your mind to, to capture all that's going on, and you hear a great sounding guitar. So when you're recording it, you're saying, why doesn't it sound like it does in real life? It's too boomy or it's too thin or it's too this, but I feel like it sounds better in real life. Well, it's probably not your gear. It's probably just what you're doing with the mic. Again, that is the key. This microphone can't think like you think, so it will only hear what's actually hitting it. So you have to trick it a little bit. So instead of putting it right in front of the sound hole or right in front of the neck, I'm going to do both, okay? I'm going to put it at the edge where it meets the sound hole in the neck, okay, right where it meets it, about again six to seven inches away, but I'm going to angle it so it's the face of the mic is actually pointing at the 12th fret. 
the mic is actually pointing at the 12th fret, but it's in front of the edge of the sound hole. So it's going to hear part of the sound hole, and it's going to hear it's actually facing the 12th fret. So ironically, you're going to get a bit of both. Let's take a listen. difference. So you're, you're getting that warmth of the body of the guitar and you're also getting the brightness of the neck blended in one microphone. Real simple. So remember, again, th and this is what I do, there's a million ways to record a guitar. So don't just take what I say and say this is how you have to do it. I'm just trying to get you to waste as little time as possible. Use this as a starting point. This is where I would tell you to start every single time. It depends on the guitar, it depends on the mic and the way you're going to play and what you're going to play. But for basic acoustic, strumming, rhythm, some picking, that kind of stuff you're going to put in a full rock mix, let's say, I would do it like this. Right in front of the sound hole, six to eight inches away, maybe even a foot away. Right where it meets the neck, but angled so it's actually looking, if you, if you look at the face of the mic, actually looking at the 12th fret. Start there and go for it. And again, like I mentioned in another post, what I would totally do after this, once that take was perfect, I nailed those four chords, I would double it, meaning I would set up a separate track and re-record it again. Not digitally copy it, I'm talking replay the thing. Try to play it as close as I can to the other, but that's what's going to give me that fullness where there's two of me playing it, you pan them left and right, age old trick, they've been doing it for years. It's going to sound really big and fat. So that's what I would do for acoustic guitar. If you haven't already, over there on the left somewhere, on the top left, you can click on subscribe to this blog. There's the orange RSS feed. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Facebook. Please read the blogs. Let me know if they're helping you. Give me ideas or give me any questions you might have, and I'll address them in another video post later. But I hope this helps. hope you make better acoustic recordings, and I hope you just jump right in. And again, no excuses. You don't need much more than 500 bucks to be doing all this. I want you to make making killer albums and just jump right in, all right? That's all for now. Hope you guys have a great weekend. We'll talk to you soon.